Okay, hi everyone. So we're here at the training apiary at ACT Beekeepers at Jerobomba Wetlands. We're just going to have a quick look at some of the hives we've got here. It's, um, we've got a couple of hives to look through, but we won't be able to smoke them and open them because it's just coming into winter now and it's not fair on the bees to open them when it's cold. But uh, we can still see a lot of what the, what the apiaries are, lo are like. What we've got behind us is two of the four training pads. So these are um, hives in all different configurations and we use these for training. And some of them are quite special as well. They have a particular function as well for our regulatory system. So what we've got just here, this is a two queen hive and you can probably see at the front here, there's a lot of activity. Double queen hive, it forms a much larger colony and there's a separation to stop the two queens from fighting. But that simulates if you've got a really big colony, they often will have two queens working in unison and we essentially force that to happen in this hive. Back here, this pink hive, the reason it's pink, in a minute, you've caught up on the cord, so your foot. So let's come over here. You can just stand, come over this way and just stand here. So this cute pink hive is pink for a reason. This is a biosecurity hive. We don't eat the honey out of here. It sometimes has chemical treatments put in it to detect certain pests and diseases. However, what we do have is a kit and we can quickly talk through what's in this, this d detection kit. Some of it's kind of fun. This is the most fun test we do. This is called a sugar shake. What we do is we get a group of bees and we put them into this jar with icing sugar. No really, that's actually what we do. So you put the bees in with icing sugar. If there are mites that we're trying to detect, hopefully then they're not in Australia at the moment. If they were to incurs, have an incursion and they get into these hives, you roll the, the bees in icing sugar and the mites can't grip on. They use their legs to grip on. The icing sugar makes them lose their grip. The bees become covered in icing sugar. You then tip the, you shake the icing sugar out with any mites, hopefully detecting it. You've then got absolutely furious bees, but they're also delicious because they're covered in icing sugar. You open them up, you throw them back into the hive. They're furiously angry, but by the time the other bees have cleaned them off completely, they've forgotten why they're angry in the first place. And that can be kind of fun. The other thing we have is a less gentle method. It's called an alcohol wash. This is what it sounds. We actually wash the bees in alcohol. That does kill them. It euthanizes them instantly, but it has a very high detection method for some of the pests we're after. The other thing we can do is in the, in the, in the beehive, it's a completely matriarchal society. The, the girls are absolutely in charge and the boys are expendable. So we do something called drone uncapping. The drones are often targeted by some pests. So we actually get the baby drones and we pull them out of their cells with this fork to have a look and see if they, if they have any pests on them. Uh, it is a bit harsh, but around about now in winter, we can't do drone uncapping because one of the things a hive will do as they prepare for winter, they will actually push all the males out the front door to freeze and starve. It sounds really harsh, but males really only in winter sit around, eat too much and don't do any useful work, pretty much like regular blokes as well. So as a result, the colony will get them, get rid of them as soon as they don't have any queens to mate with. So that's this. And this is a standard Langstroth hive. We keep all the gear, a barrier system here. We okay? We keep a barrier system so that the gear for a sentinel hive will only be used on that hive. And we've got some smoker fuel here. You know, but basically everything we need to do an inspection is at this hive. This is one configuration of a hive and this has frames inside it that allow you to actually just pull them out and also to move this hive very easily. It's not the only way to keep bees. All throughout Africa, for instance, you'll see top bar hives. And we've got one just behind us here. So you can see the bees coming and going in the entrance there. It's a really nice, gentle way to keep bees. As you can see, you can walk right up to them. They're not attacking us. But what we'll do is we'll walk around to the back of this hive now, and I'll show you how you actually do an inspection. Again, we won't open up. It's too cold and windy today, but we can at least see how to do it. So this comes out like a big cabinet. These are what's called top bars. So unlike a lot of the other hives, instead of a frame, 
the bees build their comb down off this, off this in a very natural way. It's a really nice gentle way of keeping bees. The bees don't mind at all, they quite enjoy it. Um, you've got a quite, a, lot of, quite a lot of people taking this up um, as, a, as a, a good method. The big downside to this style of hive is it's not very transportable. It is quite hard to move them around the landscape and the combs can break because then it was braced in. But if you've just got a backyard hive and you just want one, this is a pretty good option for most people. This is what we call one of the follower boards. So this is used to keep the brood box confined and keep them warm. As you can see, there's some, there's some honey and wax that's been built onto this. This has been quite heavily used. Worth noting, there's two types of products in that bees make inside the hive of structural products. One is the honeycomb. You can see the honeycomb here. They use that to brace their and to store their honey and also to raise their brood. The other stuff you can see on the top here, this is a resin. This is called propolis. This is a bee glue. And what it is, is the, one of the things I really like about bees, nothing they make has just one purpose. So this is a glue. They use it to glue things together and to seal small gaps. It's all purpose. It's also a very, very powerful antibiotic. So it's used in a lot of, um, the bees actually uh, collect resins from plants so they have their own little herbarium essentially they collect this resin and they use it to coat the inside of their hive in this antibiotic coating but also it it's used by them if they get sick they will eat a little bit of this to to essentially dose themselves with antibiotic uh, a lot of research going on as to how we could adapt this to human health as well is that why um, we're uh, celebrating World Bee Day to show the importance of bees and what they do. Yeah, absolutely. Sort of to get that appreciation that it's not just about the honey, it's about all sorts of different products they provide and all the services they provide to agriculture, but also just to get people interested in bees themselves rather than just the honey. So we might just close this up now. We wouldn't, we would normally open this up, but I don't think we'll do that today. It's a little bit cold and windy, and that's that's pretty much it. Thanks very much for having us and um, hopefully you turn up on World Bee Day and get to celebrate the, your bees.